Real YouTubist, attempt the Elite Four, five trainers remain between us and the end of the game. I actually, I don't normally plan them, but this one I gave a little bit of thought to, and then I forgot what I figured out to sing, and that was the result. Anyway, hello. So, it's been a long journey, obviously. I believe this is actually the 22nd episode in our Emerald Kaizo series, and the finale of Run 9. Um, this is the Elite Four, so the way that it works is, um, you are of course allowed to heal in between trainers, but not mid-battle. Um, you're allowed to bring, you know, six Pokemon in, and any TMs, and other, like, you know, berries and stuff like that, but you're not allowed to change Pokemon between trainers, so, um... Yeah, I don't really want to do too much kind of introduction here because the uh, this episode is already obviously a little long and um, I think the editor's done a pretty phenomenal job, but uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching this content and been supporting me and all that. Uh, it really does mean a lot and um, I never really thought that I'd be able to successfully like do a Nuzlocke series here on YouTube or on Twitch um, just because it wasn't really my niche and, and to see so many people enjoying this run and um, showing support and really being excited for uh, me to play this game and to I guess to watch the finale now um, it really means a lot, so I just want to say thank you. Um, and as always, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It obviously helps with the channel a lot. We're trying to get to a million. We're a little over a third of the way there. Uh, subscribers on YouTube. So, um, yeah, without further ado, please enjoy the Elite Four of Pokemon Emerald Kaizo. Doesn't look like I'm dropping frames. Looks like a regular stream. We will take it, dog. All right, here we go. I had the fight and I blew it. That's really upsetting. Why do you have quick call self destruct risky air, eh, whale lord? Why? It's 11 out of 16 I survived. Don't boost. <laughs> I think I suck Sharpedo here. I, I think I have to. Sharpedo, you did a really good job, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think we're ready. I have all my bonds. I have all the TMs. I have the heart skills learned. Just do one last check. Chicken moves. Earth power frustration, double edge quick attack. Wish quick attack, shit double psychic. Surf, ice beam, recover, mirror coat. Mirror coat, safeguard, encore counter. Shadow punch, shadow sneak, earthquake, disable. Fake up, magical leaf, ice beam, giga drain. Gonna have to be a little flexible here. I think we're ready, chat. The first two fights have a fair bit of PP still. I'm just letting you know. Anyway, there's no turning back now. We have made it to the Elite Four. This has been a long time coming, to say the least. It's been, I don't, I never really thought we'd get here. True, personally. But here we are, we're standing in front of Sydney, the beginning of the Elite Four. So this Elite Four run is, um, to say the least, it's it's scary. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that can go wrong. And also, there needs to be a fair bit of variance in our favor. So there's, like, our odds of getting through this are not, they're not phenomenal, to say the least. Basically, here's the way the Elite Four works. The first two trainers should be fine, ideally. Uh, in theory, things can go wrong, in which case I'm gonna have to freestyle a little bit, but I have, like, the first two trainers are not that, they're not impossible, to say the least. We are going to get unlucky at some point during this, during this round. It's, it's not possible to, it's, it's super unlikely to just never get unlucky. Um, the question is when we get unlucky and how we adapt. Um, but yeah, I mean, with that, with that being said, I think there's no point delaying it. I think I'm ready. I've spent a lot of time prepping for this. I'm super nervous. Um, I think it's time to, time to start. Sableye's the lead. Oh, they just Sableye? Oh, oh yeah, Rip Dust Clops, but it is Sableye. Right, just do Sableye first, then Dust Clops next fight. Okay, cool. So Sableye. It's moves. Shadow Sneak, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, HP Rock. It wants to Brick Break in front of my Tauros. So we're gonna just do Dust Clops on that Brick Break. Get an Intimidate down. That's two Brick Breaks because I am Pressure. 
Yeah, my meds died. We don't need it though. Switch back. Actually, maybe it was better to lead with Tusklops here. This is always Shadow Ball. Two Brick Break. It's pressure's actually bad here because it makes me, it makes my, it makes things a little bit more awkward. We're gonna have to do this. We're gonna install 24 Shadow Ball out of this save line. Should be its final brick break. All right, now is where things get interesting. I just saw 17 more shadow balls, and I have to actually take damage this time. All right, that's 15 brick breaks. So this is shadow ball. I get one more out of the way here. Okay, eight shadow balls are gone. Chat. We have 16 more to get through. So now what I need to do is I need to see how much is my load of taking from the Sableye crit shadow ball. We need to make sure we're out of crit range of shadow ball here. Um, my Lodic has to stay above 270 HP. Um, as long as my Lodic stays above 270, uh, shadow ball crit never kills me. So when, when I get below 270, I will recover once. Um, so now we have to do HP rock. 270 is the magic number. If we go, if we get at or below 270. So the reason why we've done this chat is that this allows my Milotic to be full HP more or less by the end of Sableye. I'm going to surf here. Only five left, which is probably enough to be rocking this turn. Okay. Milo's surf here never three KOs. It's a guaranteed, um, it's guaranteed never to three KO, so I can surf one more time and then recover and then kill. Okay, we didn't crit. I really need this next one not to crit. One more time. Okay, nice. I recover and then surf, as long as my surf doesn't crit here. Do not crit, do not crit, do not crit, do not crit. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna recover. Shadow sneak? Nope, it's fine. Maybe surf is just, no, no, this is the correct move. This is HP rock. It's a 50-50 HP rock for shadow sneak here. We prefer our HP rock this next turn, obviously, but it's, okay. All right, it goes for max damage. As long as, if this crits me, we're in a little bit of damage. Danger. Okay, perfect. All right, Houndoom is now in. Sableye is down. First Pokemon gone in the Elite Four chat. Houndoom is in. Okay, I'm gonna Surf here. We're gonna see. So Surf should do about 75%, but it's, yeah, normally hitting Power Grass. Crit does not kill me here, so that's good. Unfortunately, my Milotic is, oh, okay, it's fine. It's a little bit lower than I would have loved, truthfully, because I'm not in barrier range yet. Should do minimum 75%, can do as much as 88. I low rolled that, okay, that's fine. Um, It's gonna be hitting Power Grassing again, so I'm gonna go into Taurus. Okay, HP grasp me. Okay, perfect. Uh, no crit is really good here. Crit should be okay, but no crit makes my life way easier. Okay, that's not a crit, but it actually did a lot of damage. I'm faster, I'm just gonna frustration it. Okay. Okay, two down. Okay, that's two superpower. Now it sees a kill with HP Ghost. Or no, now it wants to go for HP Ghost, so we're gonna go back into Tauros. This is the final superpowers. Now it's, I got done to minus four, basically. Yep, that was eight. And now Hidden Power Ghost. So this is the situation that I planned for. <clears throat> so I want to take a little second to reset here. Machamp is in. Um, my Umbreon should beat Machamp. Beating the Taurus is a little spooky, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it should be okay, right? Because after I came with Champ with Dusclops, that brings in Jolteon, which brings in Tauros, right? So I need to stay above 198 HP, chat. Actually, I really need to stay above 198 HP plus another one. That was the worst case scenario. Okay. Um, I'm gonna Psychic once. I'm faster. If I counter wrong, this thing is not out of superpowers. It's gonna get really ugly really fast. This is not a 3 KO unless I draw. Yep, HP Ghost. It's using random move now, which is super nice. Um, I'm gonna Psychic, then Wish. This is why we have Psychic. It's not a 3 KO, which is super good, because we do not want to KO with this. Actually, we do want to KO with this thing. Oh, we got the crit, uh, but it doesn't kill. Perfect. That is super good. No kill to save me an attack. 
All right, cool. That's really good. Okay, that's really, really, really good. Okay, I'm gonna use a wish here. EQ, okay, don't crit me. Do not crit. Okay, and now I get to pick up the KO with Psychic. <sighs> okay, my champ down. This should bring in the Jolteon. I heal back to full thanks to Wish. Now, I wanted Umbreon in on this for a specific reason. And the reason is that this allows me, I do not want my Dust Clops to take too much damage here. It's actually quite important that my Dust Clops does not take too much damage here. So, Umbreon's gonna Thunderbolt me here, right? I'm gonna Wish again. No Para is really nice. Okay, perf. Umbreon takes a little bit of damage, right? It's not ideal. However, what it does is it lets me get this Wish up. And I get back two more Wish BP from my Lepiberry. Now, I, with the Wish up, I get to go hard into Dust Clops, and I really want to pick up the K with Dust Clops here. T-Bolt comes out, no crit, no crit, no crit, no crit. Okay, and now I go back to full HP. This allows me to bring Dust Clops in safely, and this is really important because I need to stay at certain ranges on Tauros if I get crit. And by, by, by passing Wish here, I ensure that I'm never, uh, I never, I, I should be baiting the proper move for Taurus here. Okay, I don't get crit, that's super good. This is a roll to kill that it doesn't really matter. Because I have Shadow Sneak, and since I didn't get, my Lumbery is still active as well, and they don't need Lumbery for anything else this fight. Okay, get the kill. This brings in Tauros, chat. There's 24 PP on double edge. However, it wants to go for HP Ghost here. Which is why I needed this thing. If I got crit, I would have been baiting Earthquake, which would have been really bad, which is why I passed Wish into this. So it's going for HP Ghost. Okay, the first HP Ghost. All right, chat, we've been here before. <laughs> what move is he gonna use now? It's gonna use Double Edge. That's two Double Edges. One, two. All right, 24 Double Edges, chat, we're out. 24 double edges. That was the last PP stall of this fight. It's Taurus is minus six attack, but critic more uh, attack drops. I think in the end, I'm probably gonna use Ludicola to beat this. Okay, nice damage. And the Lush here. Okay, don't crit me. Nice. And is my Milo currently in Earthquake range? I don't need Umbreon for Alakazam, though it isn't bad either. Darkie, thank you for the six months. Oh, and uh, Orox, thank you for the for the gifted sub. All right, HP Ghost. Okay. This is a five UK looks like. Okay, don't crit me. Crit me. All right. Um, but I'm not dead to another crit, so I can go for Wish again. Earthquake crit is max 158. Okay, max one. I just need above 158 here, ideally. Alright, I'm technically dead to Earthquake crit here. The odds of it critting, uh, okay, wait, the max roll, it's, I'm dead to two out of 16. Is it really worth it, though, at the end of the day? I don't think I go for it, right? Ludicol is a perfectly safe switch here. Yeah, why would I why would I ever risk it? Ludicola can super come in here and just cook a jiggy drain, right? Quick attack? Okay. I wouldn't have died, but whatever. Yeah, literally no reason to risk it. Okay. It could quick attack, so I have to go for Jiggy Drain. Okay, EQ. Because I still have my I still have Wobbuffet to beat the Alakazam. I'm not even sure Alakazam can beat Dust Clops or um or whatever it's called, Umbreon either. Okay, still alive. Um, can I jigger again? Okay, nice. Went off fake out. In this game, uh oh, great again. It's fine. Um, in this game, fake out and quick attack are the same priority. So if I fake out, they can just quick attack first. It's fine. I didn't need Ludicolo for Alakazam anyway. Psychic? Okay. I'm never did a fire punch crit. And I can go for a Shadow Ball. Uh, 126, that's max damage here. Okay, so Shadow Ball. HP Water. Just, let's see if I can... Actually... Yeah, it's his weakest move. Doesn't crit me, now I have to switch them. 
Just to get some damage off. But this gives me a chance to crit. Okay. Didn't get the crit. That's fine. It's in Shadow Sneak range. Actually, wait. It's in Shadow Sneak range, right? I do have Shadow Punch and Clots. Yep. Also, if something were to go wrong here, I could just go back into Wob. Or back into Arbor and then into Wob. Okay. And then Shadow Sneak for the kill. And that... <coughs> is Deathless Sydney. All right, chat, let's take a look at our notes for Phoebe. Let's see here. The reason why, preemptively, we drop Shadow Ball and Dust Clocks, right? Right before this, we actually drop Shadow Ball for Shadow Punch. This ensures that I shouldn't lose as long as I do things correctly. Um, as long as I do things correctly, I shouldn't be losing the random accuracy stuff. That's why we did that. So this fight is pretty calculated overall. The issue is that there's a lot of variance in the sleep. However, every one of my Pokemon have a Lumberry, and I have some decent tools against sleep, including allowing my Umbreon to be paralyzed. Ooh, spooky. So this this early game can go, if I get good, very, it, there's not that much that can go super wrong. There's two scenarios in which it goes very, 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 very well for me. And that is Shadow Sneak turn one crit onto the Gengar. And number two, Hypnosis Miss. They're not super likely. It's not in my favor by any means, but either of those scenarios are really nice for me. So let's see. Dust Clops, this isn't the most important moment of your life, I won't lie to you. That will come later, don't worry, you, we, will be, we will be having that. The reason I'm Shadow Sneaking here is number one, I can crit with it, Shadow Punch probably just kills. And number two, this Gengar actually has Destiny Bond. So, um, if for some reason I Shadow Punched and Destiny Bonded, then what would happen is that uh, I would die and lose the run. We don't get the crit, let's see if we send the Hypnosis here. It connects, that's unfortunate. Um, just gonna limit one of my options later. I still get full HP Dust Clops though, it's just not as ideal. I could potentially allow my Dust Clops to get paralyzed in Gardevoir later if I wanted. Um, I will consider that. I don't think I want that, though. Let's go for another Shadow Sneak, pick up the KO. All right, save land. All right, chat, you want to play some Peepee Stall? Time to play my favorite game, Pokemon Emerald for the Nintendo GameCube. Double team number one. Tenth, normal attack, tenth rest. All right, cool. And now only a Shadow Ball left. So I don't need Earth Power for the rest of this fight, so I'm gonna start clicking it. It is plus six evasion, but I guess I'm just gonna hit it. Okay. Last but not least, 24. So what does this accomplish, somebody asked. Chat, what happens if I KO this Dust Clops right now? The opponent will switch in another Pokemon, right? We all agree on that. But which Pokemon comes in? The answer is, most of the time, against Tauros, Umbreon, Wobbuffet, or Dust Clops, they go into Sableye. Against Ludicolo, they go into Gardevoir, or, uh, they go into Crobat, and against Milotic, they go into Gardevoir. Now, we want to bring Milotic in now, because we want Gardevoir to be the next Pokemon in and not Sableye, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Okay, that's the first struggle. I counted correctly. Should be very little damage. Uh, 10 damage. Okay, I'm gonna need to hit one of these eventually, or it's gonna eventually die to recoil. Is it even taking recoil? I'm actually not sure. I think it's taking one damage or recoil. Okay, I got the kill. Perfect. So what does this do, chat? Because I want to get Thunder Waved. Oh, okay. It should Thunder Wave me eventually. Okay, I'm gonna wish here. Should have a little bit more than I expected. Um, okay, I'm not the decrypt. Um, okay, hang on. T-Bolt again, doesn't want to thunder wave me. Shadow Ball comes out. This is a three hit KO with quick attack. Or like three hits and quick attack. I actually predicted a little more than I expected. Let me just really quickly double check that I'm doing this correctly. Okay, wish again. I was hoping to get paralyzed here. It might not be happening though. Okay, doesn't do very much damage. 
Okay, that's my little berry. We got two more wishes for the rest of this game. It should be okay. A shadow ball here. Don't crit me. Perfect. Okay, it looks like I'm not gonna get paralyzed here. It's, I'm slower, I guess, so it doesn't want to paralyze me. I can't really afford to switch here. Do very little. Okay, go back to full. Why do you want para? Um, because the other mons that are threatening on this team have sleep. What if crit? Crit doesn't kill me from here. Show all again. Para me? Just give me, give me the para. Give me the full para. Show me the full para. Or like pa full para, but not. Okay, whatever. Okay. Alrighty. That's Guard we're down. Alright, chat, that's three down. Basically, what this allows me to do is it allows, if something had gone wrong or like off the rails, um, on the Sableye, I'm going to be able to wish back up my Umbreon, right, to full. And I can actually recover here as well by making Sableye a next, because this is the final PP stall of the run. So crit shadow ball does maximum 90%, which is 297. So I just need to stay above 297. Which isn't ideal, of course, but like whatever. I don't need recover PP after this, which is fine. Should be 17 shadow balls. Shadow ball's a little iffy though, right? Because it can defense drop. Okay. I don't love this actually, this is a bad plan. Switching out soon. This should be 18 shadow balls. Yeah, I don't like this plan at all. I'm switching if I don't get crit here. That's really unlucky. It's really unlucky. Okay. Um, this plan sucks. I think I'm supposed to recover again, but I risk another crit, which is one in 16. I was gonna use this thing to be crowbat. Yeah, this is sloppy. Hang on, let me think about this. What are you doing? I know, I, that was actually really bad. Um, I can probably crowbat without this, right? I don't know why I didn't go with the cold. Oh no, yeah, I had to. I should have gone Umbreon. What am I doing? Alright, set of shadow balls. That was the last PP stall. I, I got a little sloppy there. That was, that was my I don't know why I want my Lodic. Um Alright, now what we need to do is we need to chip this thing down with Dust Clops. Struggle number one. Count struggle PP. Okay. How much is this club doing? This thing does about 25% with Shadow Punch, which never misses. So I need to dodge a crit here, which is kind of important. Okay. I need to dodge my own crit, sorry. Them critting isn't a huge deal. My Dust Clops does how much to this Sableye? Shadow Punch does 26%, so I can use this twice more. Or once if I crit, okay. Um. Don't crit, don't crit, don't crit. Perf, okay. Okay. Do not crit me. Okay. Okay. Turn one of safeguard. Okay, perf. Turn two of safeguard. Okay, that was the last chance for it to grip me with that. Turn three of safeguard. Don't crit me. Turn four of safeguard. Okay. 263 down to 173, did about 90 damage. Let's just double check that I'm never in max roll crit range. Um, surf crit does maximum 183. Oh, it kills me. Okay, this plan didn't work then. Surf, okay. This is the scary part of the fight. Okay, I have lost my safeguard as well. Am I faster than this thing? I do not believe so, but I will double check. I'm not faster. And Jigadrain doesn't kill. They go for Jigadrain. Ah, oh, this is actually super messy. Okay, they heal a lot from that. 160. Okay, I'm not in crit range here. 
Oh, wait, this is also super messy. Just grass whistle, dude. Okay, it misses. That's really good, okay. Okay, it should be fine now. Kill? It's not gonna kill. It's barely not, okay. All right. Ah, oh, I should have ice beamed. It could have switched. I didn't think about it. Okay, Crobat's in. I, I, oh, shoot. No, no, I, I, okay. This is fine, it's fine, it's fine. Cause I, I should be able to kill the little coal later. It's leftovers, right? Okay, this thing is a huge issue. I think that's a big issue. Okay. <sighs> Lumber activates. Okay. Ah, uh, heat waves, okay. Don't burn me. Don't crit me, don't burn. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's so bad. Okay. I might wipe on this thing. I don't really have great tools left. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, do not burn me. Don't crit, okay. Okay. All right, so now, what do I do? It's always air slashing or hypnosis in here, so I can get another safeguard up. Nice, okay. Air slash crit does maximum damage to my wob, 333 damage. So as long as I stay above that, I'm good. Um, so do I counter here? I think I do, right? Don't flinch me. Do not flinch me. Crit would be crit, no flinch is ideal. Okay, do about 100 damage here. I'm now dead to air slash crit though. I'm so close. Oh, I'm so close, but I can't stay in. Don't crit me. Crit me. Okay. I'm not in crit range here from this thing. It's not in psychic range, though, is the issue. I think I have to get more damage down so I can KO with priority. Oh, it can flinch me. Please don't flinch me. Please don't flinch me. Okay. High roll kill. High roll kills. Quick attack doesn't kill here. Um. Okay. Shadow sneak always kills. Okay, their air slash crit also always kills. So if I've measured this wrong, then I could, in theory, get wiped here. But Shadow Sneak should always kill here. Come on, Dusclops, come on, pick up the kill. Okay. 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 Yeah, I was really worried about this. Uh, Lady Cole's in range of Shadow Sneak. Chat, that was the easy part. That was the easy part, let me remind you. This was the easiest fight of the thing. Although for me, because I didn't have Ments, the Ludicolo became a little bit spooky. This next fight, the third Elite Four member, is our make or break moment. Now we can still, even if we make it past Glacia perfectly, we could still wipe. So first of all, we're gonna use Dig. It's Dig on brand time. Okay, dig in the Elite Four feels good, man. Because we're also using Toxic here. Toxic Dig Wish Umbreon. Okay. All right, Milotic actually does not run Ice Beam for this fight either. I forgot about that. We're losing Ice Beam Milotic as well in favor of Attract. Milotic used Attract way back when we first got it. We didn't run it like ever again. And now the make or, make, make or break moment here is it track my Lodic, probably? Well, actually, it's, it's actually the Ludicolo, but yeah. Yeah, Shadow Ball Plops is another really big one. Because we no longer need the do uh, uh, the fact that Shadow, Shadow, so the advantage of Shadow Punch is that it never misses, but we've gotten through the fights that we needed that for. So Shadow Punch now gone, Shadow Ball back on the table. <sighs> Chat, this is the thing that I've spent the majority of my Elite Four prep time on. Um, this is though it's most likely to end our run here. She's gonna lead off with Glalie, chat. And the way that most people approach this is that if you lead any Pokemon that isn't Dusclops, any Pokemon at all, 
Every turn Glalie's out, it has at least a 7% chance of just exploding, and if it explodes, you probably lose the run. Um, so what most people do is they lead a different mon and they just say, okay, I hope that I don't, I hope that I don't get exploded on, right? Sometimes you can lead mons that would die to crit, but you just, and, and in addition to, to hoping you don't get exploded on, you also hope you don't get crit. Those are, those are your things. It's about 47% to spikes, 47% to click an attack, probably weather bomb most of the time, and then 7% to use explosion. Um, however, that's not the way that we've been playing this run, right? That's not the way that I've, that's not the way that I've been playing Emerald Kaizo. And although it's risky, what I'm trying to do is, is... I'm going to say I'm giving up more early game for giving myself fewer odds. Oh yeah, did I mention that it's perma raining by the way? So basically there's a couple points of failure. The Glacier, the Glalie we're okay against, but certain mood, like mood combinations can be really hard. The Reggie Ice has a 3% chance of exploding at any point. That's, that's, and there's nothing I can do about that. I have no counterplay. And if, if either of the Mons exploded on me, it would mess me up because, and the reason why I'm forced to play this way, by the way, is because my Ludicolo's IVs are so terrible. 2 HP, 2 defense two special defense and 14 or 15 special attack. It's like the worst Ludicolo and because my bulk is so bad, bad, normally you can use Ludicolo and potentially even like three and a half, take three and a half mods with it. I'm hoping to take maybe two, like maybe two. If it beats one, then it hasn't like, it hasn't thrown for us. Um, I always have to risk two critical hits on the Lapras and there's literally no counterplay to that. So the Lapras can mess us up. If the Ludi goes down, the Whaler becomes super tricky. The Swamper can mess us up. Um, the Reggie Ice can super mess us up. It's very in our favor. It can go really, 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 really wrong. Um, so this is if we make or break, like or like this is this is our make or break moment of the Elite Four. And I don't have a great like it's it's kind of like I've done the most I can. I've tried to limit my odds of of losing to bad RNG as often as possible. I'm playing around as many crits as I can, but I can't play around all of them. Um, and that's just the fact of the matter. So. Without further ado, this is the hardest part of the Elite Four for us. If we make it through this unscathed, it's going to be a miracle. Um, but yeah, now we deal with Permarain Glacier. Not even make a break, just break, that's correct. All right, chat, here we go. Glalie is the lead. Now this Glalie has Intimidate, but we actually saved our White Herb the entire run, and we're gonna use it here. So the best case scenario here, Ice Beam, no freeze, or Weather Ball, no freeze, lower mineral of those mons, Shadow Ball crit. Shadow Ball crit is huge here, but we're probably not gonna get it. They go for Ice Beam. Okay, that's good as long as, if we, oh yeah, if we get Frozen, we auto lose. It wasn't supposed to Ice Beam. 10% chance to auto lose. Okay, just crit, dog. Just crit, dust clops. This is this would be so huge. Okay, no crit. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Goes for spikes. All right, this this is more or less what we expected. This is what we planned for. Spikes were always going up here. There was nothing I could do about it. This is the planned part of the fight. Okay, I got two minerals. It's fine. I have shadows need to pick it up. Uh, it doesn't have a ghost resist, so it won't switch. Okay. One down. This was the yeah. This is this is what was gonna happen most of the time. It, it's fine. It's not ideal, of course, but it's not horrible either. Um, Reggie Ice comes in. This is where things can start to go off the rails. So first, this Reggie Ice is always ice beaming. This is the easy, it's the easier part. Now is where things get really tricky. Now is where things get really, really spooky. So no crit ice beam is ideal here. If freeze would also be bad. No crit. Okay, perf. Don't freeze me. Okay. This thing is 75% of the time going to counter here. 75%. But 25% of the time, or 22% 20, of the time it thunders and 3% it booms. Counter? Counter? Any counters? Perfect. Okay. Again. Okay. All right, chat. 75% of the time it's going to counter here. This is Lumberry, but I still get a Toxic off. Counter. Counter, dude. Dog, just counter. Eat the Lumberry. Counter, 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 please. Okay, all right. Reggie Ice, one more time. If this booms at any point, we're doomed. All right, counter. Counter, 75% of the time, it counters. Okay? Okay, let's turn one of poison. Okay, again, if this booms at any point, it's er, like insta-loss. Counter, counter, counter. Okay, 
This is the turn where if it explodes this turn, the run is dead. If it exploded any of the other turns, the run wasn't dead. But this turn, 3% of the time we will lose the run. 75, 97% of the time it's always fine. Do not explode. Counter or Ice Beam are both fine here. Just don't explode on me. Okay. Okay, this is now 3 out of 16 turns of Poison, which is 6 over 10, 16 damage total. This has 10 over 16 remaining HP. Okay. I still don't want it to boom here. It still can. Um, let me see how much... Wait, hang on. I gotta run a calc here. I have a hundred... Oh, I never did a Thunder Crit because it's Ice Beam turn 1. Okay. Okay, okay. I can go to Scops. I've never did a Thunder Crit. I mean, I was always going to Desclops anyway, but yeah, I calculated spikes. I should have 204 HP after the spikes if I did it correctly. Uh-oh. No Thunder Crit. Okay, counter. Okay. And now it will always Ice Beam. Regardless. It always Ice Beams here. Because it can't counter, it can't explode, and it doesn't want to Thunder. And I've timed the Toxic perfectly with this specific sequence so that it's now at uh, uh, 14 over... Uh, no. It's at 10 over 16... It's at 6 over 16 remaining HP. 3 to 8%. 3 over 8, 3 over 8 HP. 6 over 16. After this, it will be on 1. It'll be effectively at 1 HP. And my Melodic is faster, right? Yeah, it's way faster. And can Surf. And it can't explode anymore because I brought in a Ghost type on that, on that turn. Oh, current HP, not max. Oopsie. Okay, don't crit me. Okay. Freeze would have been fine. Okay, and now Regiice, thanks to the Toxic damage is in range of Surf. So I will click Surf and take the KO. Okay, Regia is down, but it didn't matter. Dugong in. Okay, chat, the reason this is so important and the reason why I had to go through so much trouble and not just not just bring in Dusclops, because this fight is far from over, by the way. The reason why I had to go through so much trouble here is because we needed Dugong to come in next. This is very, very important for this plan. We are not out of the woods yet. That was the... We were not even on the... On the of, of this fight, three of the six mons are threats. We've dealt with one of them. Regiace changes its odd of explosion after it falls below half, below half HP. So you might have noticed that as it fell below half HP, I switched in Dusclops to ensure it never exploded. The reason why we don't want it to explode on Dusclops is there's actually a bug in the game. If it explodes, the game freaks out and it messes up the turn order. So even though Dugong is always supposed to switch in, if it had exploded, it would have set in Lapras. And then after Lapras, Dugong. And that's going to be, if things go according to plan, that's going to be a really big problem. So this thing's faster. It always is in Tower Grasses. We need to dodge um, some crits here, but we're not in a range of a crit right now. 239, down to 153. I'm going to pull up Dugong in the calc. I also need to count to make sure that ideally I have seven recovers at the end of this. 317, okay. I'm gonna gear cut once. Okay. Okay. Oh, it low rolled. Oh, 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 low roll one more time. I'm recovering here. Wait, if it low rolls one more time, don't crit me, do not crit me. Crits me, okay. That's bad, but it's okay. Uh, I have to burn an extra recover here because of that. Although, I was actually always recovering twice, I think, so it it actually is okay. I really want to end up with seven recovers at the end of this dugong. Okay, recover one more time. Oh, can drill run! Right, okay, perfect. That full HP. Oh, wait, uh, I took a thing I didn't do that on my mirror coat. Right. Uh, crits me again? Um, okay, I'm now at six. If I don't, if I don't mirror coat this turn. Okay, hang on. Let me think about this, because Whale Lord's gonna- I need this to be Whale Lord as well. That was a bad- that double crit in a row was really bad there. It doesn't really change too much, I'm mirror coding. Okay. Ideally, actually, this doesn't- actually, ideally, we don't kill here. Low roll me? I think that might have been a low roll. If we don't kill here, we're in really good shape. Do not kill, do not kill, do not kill. That's so good. Okay, wait, that's really good. Um, okay. I'm not in crit range right now. Don't crit this one. Just dog, just don't crit this one. Okay. Let me think about this. What's my current percentage at? I would like to be above 70 after... I would like to be above 82 here. What am I at? 294 divided by 329? I'm at 89. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, this thing is always hidden power grassing, or it's going for um, drill run. Okay, drill run. Okay, it's fine. Shouldn't do too much damage. Luke, let's take a little bit of damage. So here's... Chat, here's the part... Don't crit me. Okay. Here's where things get interesting, chat. There is no way around this. Lapras is in now. Lapras is in. 
And the thing about Lapras is that no matter what I no matter what I do, I'm always dead if this thing ice beam crits me. Regardless. I'm always dead. If this thing goes for ice beam and crits me, I, I always lose. So, or I always lose Ludi. I get a Jigga Drain off. So this is where we really have to dodge a crit. We, we need three Jigga Drains to take a KO and I can never crit them because it's shell armor. That looks like a high roll to me. Okay, I'm out of range of ice beam crit the first time. Do not crit me. Please don't crit me. Oh, Ludicolo, please. Okay. I wasn't dead to crit there. All right, Ludicolo, this is your, this is your moment. I'm not going to lie to you. You need to dodge one crit here. 15 out of 16 times. I played around crits so well. This is the time where I, I just have to pray. 15 out of 16. 15 out of 16. Just dodge it. Just dodge the crit. Come on, Ludicolo. You're so good. Just dodge it. Okay. All right. Camera's frozen. Nice. Good timing. Okay. All right. That's better than we expected. Uh, I'm checking to make sure I'm not in Ice Shard range right now. Okay, Ice Shard maximum damage is 57. I'm never in Ice Shard range here. Okay. 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 So this is why the pathing is so important here. This is why the pathing is extremely important. The Wailer will now switch in. And the reason why we had to, why we had to dodge the explosions earlier we were Lumberry, so we couldn't get frozen, but um, the reason why is because we needed to be in this position. So how am I going to beat this Wailord? The thing is that this Wailord, because my Ludicolo's Ivies are so atrocious, it actually sees a kill with Hyper Voice here. So I'm given a choice here. Um, I actually have like the perfect amount of HP to bait Hyper Voice. It always Hyper Voices here, which puts me in an interesting position. Um, I can Jigga Drain and risk one more crit. But the way that we've been playing this run is we aren't risking crits, right? As, at least as few as possible. So going into by the by the horns, because it never sees a kill with water spout, it always sees a kill with hyper voice. This has to hyper voice me here, which is another reason why I didn't leave Taurus, is because I need to be full HP. I'm never dead to hyper voice crit. Now, why this intimidate matters is twofold. Number one, I don't die to crit here, but that's yeah, whatever. Okay. Wait, why did that do so much damage? Uh, that was just max roll. I was a, a max roll crit in theory could do it, but it's very unlikely. Now it's used to kill with water spout chat, which is why, as you recall, we needed my Lodic to be healthy. Yeah, some, some rolls killed me. Yeah, I counted spikes in there, but yeah, it was very unlikely. Anyway, it didn't crit, so it doesn't matter. Water spout, I'm now never did a water spout crit. Okay? And here's the thing. That's one water spout. Count them with me, chat. I'm not writing it down. Don't crit me. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm not dead to water spout now. Oh, or hyper voice. And the thing is, so normally, normally after um, bringing in my Lodic, the Wailer wants to use hyper voice. The way that it works is that it rolls all of its moves to see which one does the most damage and it clicks that. And when it's doing that, it will never calculate critical hits. Okay? And because it never calculates critical hits, because of the intimidate, it makes it so that it always water, excuse me, always water spouts, never hyper voices. Okay? And my Milotic, by spamming recover, which I have six left, means it can only use Water Spout, which is gonna be important in a little bit, or Explosion, and because of the Intimidate, I'm never dead to Explosion from full. Spout number two, okay. Spout number two. We need to dodge some crits here eventually. Don't crit me. Perfect, okay. I'm also intentionally not mirror coding here for uh, a particular reason. I'm actually one Spout short here. Just number three. Three recovers. See, it spouts, it spouts again. Okay, it should be clicking Amnesia, but I guess it doesn't want to. Uh, I, I may have used one too many recovers, actually. Because there's, wait, hang on. I recover, they spout, I recover, they spout. Yeah, on the last one, I have to risk a crit, potentially. Oh, I have four left. Wait, I have four, wait, I have four left? Okay. Okay, Amnesia number one, okay. It's fine. We're never beating this thing with um, with Milo anyway. Okay, and now we click Attract. It doesn't really matter. It's just uh, a move that I can spam with a lot of PP. Uh, if I want to start going for search, I can, I guess, but yeah. All right, Milo, time for the power of love, baby. Okay. Not really important. I don't really know. Attract doesn't really do anything here. I can start whittling, whittling down Surf's if I want, but it has Amnesia. I'll just pressure as well. Um, I don't want a Mirror Code. I'm just going to spam Attract. OK. 
Okay. This thing is getting the plus six eventually, and I can't really do anything about that. <clears throat> okay, four water spouts. The advantage of Attract is it helps me play around a crit, because I have a chance to recover twice in that case. Um, that's why I'm using Attract. Four water spouts. I could gamble now. I have to gamble at some point, right? It's fine. I'm going to go for another recover. Okay, don't crit me. Do not crit me. My Lodic, my Lodic, you always live this. Okay. 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 And now Swampert is in. Okay. This fight is not over, however. Ludicolo, you've been amazing. If you go down here, I understand, but it would be amazing if you carried us through this. Ludicolo, you're only dead to f two rolls here and a crit. Two rolls and a crit. Can you dodge it? Wait, am I in Muddy Water Range? I wasn't. Ludi? Come on, Ludi. The odds are so in your favor. It min rolled me. It wasn't even close. Okay, I'm faster. It's Deathless Glacia. That is, we got super lucky. We got super lucky. We dodged three crits there. We dodged four crits there because the, the, the uh, Whaler blew up. <sighs> Ludicolo, you had bad IVs and amazing RNG. Wait, that's cr I never, I never planned on making it this far with all six of my mons. We can still lose for sure, but that is a huge, huge, huge high roll. I'd had to risk so many crits there, like four total crits. Also, the Reggie eyes went perfectly. The Reggie eyes literally went perfectly. It just countered every turn. So let's talk about this next fight, because this next fight is... You might have thought Glacia was the hardest part, and it was, but this fight we can absolutely wipe on. There's some terrifying Pokemon here. First of all, let's do... Let's see. Milo needs Ice Beam again. That's very important. Let's do that first. Yeah, I've literally been thinking about this non-stop. I've played like these, these games like probably a hundred times in my head. As much as I could. Like, yeah. That's why I didn't worry too much about Phoebe because or like Phoebe and Sydney, because I knew that it was really gonna come down to Glacier. So I, I should have worried more about Phoebe and Sydney. Okay, Magical Leaf was there in case um Magical Leaf was there in case we got Maddie got water accuracy drop, which I couldn't guarantee. First of all, frustration. We no longer need Dig. Dig was just there in case I needed to stall a turn. It's like pseudo protect on the Red J, so it could wish back up. Let's take a little frustration here. Okay, instead of dig. Um, we also don't really need Toxic anymore. So my Umbreon's IVs are actually quite good. Um, we got pretty lucky to get this Umbreon in the first place. It was only a 7% counter. As far as I'm aware, 18 HP, 11 attack, 8 def defense, 7 special attack, um, 19 special defense, 19 speed. Probably none of you know what that means, but it actually means that I have a hidden power that is interesting. So this is hidden power ice. And the base power is 67. 67 base power, hidden power ice, which means I may be able to use Umbreon as a first line of defense against the Mence. There's a lot of crits that matter here. Umbreon's special attack is so bad, this might not even two-shot the Mence. However, it gives us an additional tool. So chat, Drake leads off with Soul Dew Latios, and the reason I wasn't too worried about this fight is because if it crits me, there, I wasn't, not only is there nothing I can do, I was not given a single Pokemon that either outspeeds and KOs Latios or lives a Latios um, crit from anything. So there's literally nothing I can do here. I just have to hope that I don't get crit. Beat Drake, losing at most Ludi and Umbreon. So this is basically, do we make it through with four Mons? If we can make it through with these, with the other four Mons, we have a chance. The more Mons we have, the better our odds though. And losing Mons becomes like very spooky. All right, chat. This is our next major stumbling block. Um, There's a lot that can go wrong here. The biggest threats here are Latios lead and then, um, Latios lead is really spooky, but really the Dragonite is the biggest threat of this team. But I think I'm ready, so let's do it. We need this Latios to not crit my, my Wobbuffet. This could literally end, like, uh, no matter what Mons I brought here, this is my best bet. Like, 
My, Wobbuffet, we haven't used you a lot, but you are the most important Pokemon I've ever seen in my life. I need you to not get crit here. Because Draco Meteor never misses. Draco Meteor's a recoil move in this game. Oh god, all right, all right, Wob. Hang in there, buddy. This is gonna do like 70%. Okay. All right, this isn't over yet. This isn't over yet. This is still go very wrong, but that's that's a good start. This is a really good start. Good job, Bob Fett. All right, good job, good job, good job. My heart's going like a million miles a minute, so we need to bring T-Turn here. Um, let me run the Calc. I don't have a counterplay, though, so do I even need to run the Calc? I should bring it up. My heart's going so fast. Okay, how much HP does my uh, Wobbuffet have, have left? 220? Is that enough? Please let that be enough. It's a roll. It's a really good roll. Basically, like, this should, this should almost always be Hidden Power Bug. HP Bug, HP Bug, HP Bug, HP Bug. It's supposed to be. It's like 75% at least, I would guess. Don't boost. Ah, oh, this boost I wipe. Okay, that's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I didn't get crit, it didn't boost. So now Tyranitar is slower than me, so it really, 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 really wants to Dragon Dance here. Like a lot. And I'm Soft Sand Taurus because it's always a two shot here. So it's gonna Dragon Dance here. And my Taurus, because it has good speed IV and because it's Tauros, is still faster, even after an, even after a Dragon Dance. Which is why the boosts were so important that it didn't get them. And because I gave it soft sand, I always two shot here. Okay. Okay. It's the end of Tyranitar. Four left. It's Kingdra, Mence, Dragonite, Latios with Soul Dew, by the way. All right, Kingdra. So this next part, this next section is where things get very messy. So Kingdra should be okay. I'm going to go into my Lodic on this. And we're going to start counting. Oh, I lied. We're PP Song again. I forgot that we PP saw this. One Draco Meteor. We, we would like this to never crit, but it's... Okay, wait, also... Wait, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna do actually pay attention here. Because it's gonna change things. Okay, 329. Minus 234. is 95 damage. Draco Meteor does, I believe, a third of its HP, right? 329 minus 234 is 95 divided by 3. It took 31 damage, so it currently has 291 minus 31 damage. It currently has 260 HP left. So we're gonna be keeping track of this Kingdra's HP. And I'm gonna recover here. We would like to we can afford one crit here, but we'd prefer zero crits. So just make things easier for us. Don't crit me. Okay, that did more that time. Is third Dr Dr Media this turn? Okay. Three twenty-nine minus Don't, don't crit me. Don't crit me. 230. It's a lot. Don't crit me. It's the fourth Draco Meteor. We're stalling for here. We're running out of Draco Meteors. Do not crit. Okay. That was a good roll. 329 minus 233 divided by 3. It took 32 damage this turn. Fifth Draco Meteor. We're halfway there. 329 minus... Don't crit me. Fifth Draco Meteor. Okay. Sixth Draco Meteor. Do not crit me. Don't crit. Come on. Uh, okay. Did 68 that time. Oh no. Is that 57? Ah, oh, it high rolled me. Oh no. Okay, that's really bad. Ah, oh, that's really bad. It's, it, it was, I could afford one crit, but I needed it to be low rolling, and it's, been, it's high rolled like all of them. But like, on average, it's high rolled more. All right, this messes things up a lot. Um, that's not good, because now I can't end this encounter with full HP. Wait, that looks like it actually might not be in range yet. I'm doing, I mean, we still got it. We got, like, actually, I mean, I, if it, okay, just don't, low roll, low roll, low roll, low roll, low roll, low roll. Mineral, 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 mineral. 
Miss? Ugh. In this game, I pop out Figgy Barrier under 8th of your HP. Do not crit me. Do not crit me, low roll. Ah, so bad. Okay. Oh, okay, things have gone off the rails. Hang on, I gotta think about this now. I thought I was gonna live. I thought I could live one crit, but it had to not high roll me. Okay. Alright, this wasn't supposed to happen. I need to go slow here. Okay, so in, in front of this, I have the option of Ice Beaming if I want, um, but it's not very good because it doesn't even kill. And Air Slash Crit would kill me. This is maybe where I lose the run if I make a mistake here. I don't have use for Umbreon after this. I go Umbreon first. No, not Ice Beaming. Going Umbreon first. Okay, Air Slash. Don't crit. You crit me? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is maybe the end of the run. I always hidden power here, for sure. Don't flinch. It's not over yet. So it's random move here, right? Which means I can't really easily switch. Which Pokemon have to survive? I don't need Umbreon for this next fight. It just makes things easier, like a lot easier. And I still have to get through, I can't use Dusclops for this, right? Milo was dead to crit, whereas Umbreon, like if it crit me, I would have rather lost Umbreon, right? And it did crit me. So I was losing him on, like, yeah, if I gotten Hidden Power Ice off, I would have been good, but, um, I'm gonna need to attack Ludi later into this fight. I think that I have to quick attack. So what's my plan? I go quick attack and then I go into, Milo and I have to dodge an attack that goes into D-Knight. I go into Plops, into Ludi, and I get to go for Ice Beam twice. I think that's the only play. Sorry, I'm run. Okay. Quick Attack did less than I thought it was going to. Oh, that's Tauros Quick Attack, not Umbreon Quick Attack, okay. Yikes, dude, okay. Sorry, I'm run. All right, I can, this is gonna be, this now determines if we wipe, I guess. Sorry, I'm run. Um, if it crits or flinches me here, it could Draco Meteor, it's like 50-50, it's not exactly 50-50, it's slightly favored to Air Slash. I need this to be Draco Meteor, no crit, or Air Slash, no flinch. Don't flinch me, don't crit, no flinch. No crit, no flinch. No crit. Dude, what? Ah! There should be a way out of this. There should be a way out of this. Um, I don't see a way out of this. All right, I need this to not be Draco Meteor. I live any attack that isn't Draco Meteor. I have to go Tauros here. It's the only way. This is probably, it's, it's like a, it should still be using air, it's a 50-50 to use Draco Meteor. It could even be Earthquake here. Uh, don't Draco. Okay, I should live this. Don't crit me. It crit me. Okay. Okay, is there any way out of this? I can afford a Tauros loss. Okay, I can still... Ice Cream, take out Ice Cream. So bad, I gotta take out. Don't flinch or crit. Do not flinch or crit. Don't flinch, don't flinch. That's the that's game. I can't win anymore. I I, I have no more play. Um Ludicolo is the next least valuable one. If I could beat Drake, I actually could win this run. That's the dumb thing. So I go Wob and it baits Draco Meteor. Um, and I live most of the time. Okay, that's better than Dust Pops, right? It's my only out. This is not always a kill. This only kills like 
So this kills one out of four times, and it could also crit. If, if I lose if I lose Wobbuffet here, I'm, I'm, it's actually over. It's gonna be close regardless. Okay. Okay, this is Dragonite. I can still do this. This was supposed to be the hard, this was supposed to be the hard part of the fight. Not, not flinch, flinch, crit, crit, crit. That's stupid, okay. Um, crit Shadow Ball brings me back into this. Don't crit me. This never works, this isn't gonna work. Defense drop, crit, okay. Crit Shadow Ball brings me back into the game right now. Crit Shadow Ball right now brings me back. Wait, wait, hang on. We no, we need to dodge one more crit. Okay. I don't think we can beat the champion, but if we don't get crit here, it's gonna call mine, right? Okay. I mean, we win, but I don't think we can beat Steven with three mons. This is always a kill. Okay. Oh, dude, we were so, we were. <sighs> I mean, we won, but I don't, like, <sighs> losing Tauros is really bad. We needed just Tauros, just Tauros made this doable. I think without Tauros, I don't think we can do this. We have three Pokemon to be six. And it's Deox, it's like three Legendary and an Aerodactyl that just is impossible. I just needed like anything to go right there, right? Like, cause I could have made it through with four Mons easily. Well, this is what we have left chat for Steven. I don't really think my plan was bad. Like, I think that I gave myself a lot of outs there and I just needed something to go right. Chat, we can do this if we dodge every single crit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Let me think about this. My Lodic, and then, and, and we have to get lucky with Explosion. So we go Surf into Surf. And KO with that. They go into Mewtwo. I go Shadow Ball. What are the odds of Shadow Ball plus Shadow Sneak KOing here? It doesn't really matter. I have another play, right? Into Mewtwo. It doesn't kill? Shadow Ball to Shadow Sneak doesn't kill? Um, okay, so that's really bad. I thought that this was a guaranteed kill. Okay, yeah, okay. So even if we beat Mewtwo, they would go into Deoxys. And I would kill it with Shadow Sneak, yeah. And then they go into Starmie. So basically the only way that we can win this is with some pretty crazy luck. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, I turned off the nature. Oh, 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 wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, I turned off the nature. Oh, it's a very good chance to kill a Shadow Ball into Shadow Sneak. There is a chance, there is a chance. Uh, it's a pretty bad chance though. Steven already, so we already wiped Steven out during the multi-battle, dog. It's not fair. You're fighting Giratina, not Steven. All right, Dratnia. If I ever, if there were ever a time to get some plot armor, it would be right now. It would be right here, right now. There is so much that can go wrong. There is so much that can go wrong. Here we go, Metagross lead. Milotic? I need a crit. I need a big crit right now. This should do 35%-ish, 27 to 35, I think. No crit, agility, okay. This is Earthquake now. Should be Earthquake. Okay, EQ, do not crit me. A single crit loses me the run, by the way. Also, if I get this early. Okay, I didn't get crit. All right, Metagross is now extraordinarily likely, but not guaranteed to use Explosion, but it is so unbelievably likely. So we need, if it doesn't explode, runs over. Runs immediately over if it doesn't go boom. <laughs> uh, it's the dead, dead runs dead. 
Okay. How much does Mewtwo do to my Dusclops? Okay, I go for it quick here. <sighs> Dog, it always blows up there. That sucks. Okay, thanks for your tech boost. All right, it actually technically, if I'm out of range, ah, yeah. Shadow Snake doesn't kill. This is old gen steel type. It's not weak to it. I have to go for Earthquake here. Yeah, that's it, Chad. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. All right, Mewtwo comes in next. Um, yeah, I've, it always goes boom there, but of course I have really bad RNG. 133, am I in range? I am, right? I'm actually never in range of anything. All right, I actually, the run isn't dead, technically. Shadow Ball, this never kills. I'm one HP above always killing, thanks to Shovel. Do not crit me. <laughs> I could have still done it! I actually could have! Shadow Ball into Shadow Sneak kills Mewtwo, and then Deoxys comes in and I Shadow Sneak again. And if it misses Hydro Pump... All right, well, I can no longer win. That's game. That's the end of the run. Um, I, I actually could have won with three Mons if things had gone a little bit differently, but... Um, yeah, that's the end of the run. That feels really bad, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, there was a lot that had to go wrong, but that's just the Elite Four of Kaizo, I guess. Um... Still feels pretty bad. Yep, why not? Why not, dude? <sighs> like, even a crit, even if it had crit me in the Metagross had just gone boom like it was supposed to, things would have been okay. That's what really, like, yeah. This is Deoxys' attack. And I can no longer beat this thing. Because my dust my dust club's dead. Alright, well. Um, just think of Shadow Ball. Psycho boost into my Wob or Shadow Ball. Yeah, because of the defense drop, I'm actually dead to Shadow Ball. Uh that's Umbreon, I'll with it. Oh, I was dead anyway, it didn't matter. That's the, that's the game. Well, it feels pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie to you. There was, like, I had so many options. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we got maybe past Glacia without trouble, but the Mets just ruined my team, and then Metagross not exploding, which it, it's the odds there are so high to explode. It was like, at, I think it's at least 75%. But that's that's it. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm proud of this run. I think that I gave myself really good odds. I think I played really well. Um, and I think that I, even with these three mons, if this fight had gone a little bit differently, I think I could have done it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Oh, well, sure. One more one, why not? Yeah. This was actually so winnable. If I only had Tauros as well, like Tauros, even if I just made it through Tauros, like if I just, if I just made it to keep Tauros. Hmm. Yeah. It's faster for, oh, right, my Melodic is slow. Okay, well. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's it. GG. Yeah, that feels pretty bad. I don't know. Maybe I'll look back and realize I misplayed at some point, but I think the Mence, like, I think my plan was solid. I just, I don't know. Maybe I need to, what, what could I have done on the Drake? Because the Drake is where I really got screwed. But if, the thing is, like, if it's going to Air Slash flinch me, like, I'm always doomed, right? And if it's, it's going to crit into Air Slash flinch, feels bad. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of this run. Let's do a little recap. It just, yeah, three Pokemon away from the end. Feels really bad. Honestly, I can't fault any of my mons. Like, my Lodic getting flinched, Tauros getting crit, Umbreon getting crit and then flinched, Ludicolo getting crit. Wait, did that all happen? Did Mence crit my Ludicolo, crit my Umbreon, flinch my Umbreon, flinch my Milotic, and crit my Tauros? Is that what I lost to? I was only in that position in the first place because the Kingdra high roll crit me. Like, the average Dragon Meteor roll is supposed to leave the Kingdra with a little bit of HP. I guess Mence would have been better in that fight, but Umbreon was really, really good in Glacia. Like, versus the Regia, Sombreon was kind of needed. Otherwise, you risk crits. I don't know. I'm proud of how I played this. I can't. I really can't be mad at my Pokemon. Like, Dusclops getting earthquake on, that wasn't supposed to happen. And then the crit from Mewtwo. I'm just actually trying to think. It's possible. Like, it's really difficult. Actually, after earthquake, it was really, really difficult, I think. Basically, if it had exploded, Dusclops could have taken three kills. Or, like, Count Explosion could have taken four kills. Because it should be, it beats Mewtwo, Deoxys, and heals up on them, and then, and then, and then it comes in Jirachi, and we beat Jirachi with Mirror Coat. Though, yeah, with Jirachi being faster than my Milotic, I might have been in trouble regardless, depending on how much T-Bolt did. Like, T-Bolt and T-Bolt into something else would have been bad. Um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the content. I hope you all did as well. 
Um, my Lota carried so far throughout this run. Dustclops should have been, Dustclops is a little bit of a letdown, I'm not gonna lie to you, but was still useful in the other four, great for PP stalling. Wobbuffet didn't get crit by, Wobbuffet was an MVP, amazing versus Drake, actually managed to hang on versus Latios and um, and the other, uh, the, the Salamence. Taurus was a great month. Like we caught it near the end, but it was amazing. Ludicolo, you, I thought you were bad, but you really proved me wrong. Umbreon was really good in the Elite Four. It did, it did its job, it wasn't Umbreon's fault. I'm not sure if I had a better answer to that Mens though. Like, I think I adjusted well. I could have risked the first crit on Milo, but if Milo dies there, I'm done. Whereas if Umbreon dies there, I'm not done. But if Umbreon dies and then everything else dies. I could have gone Tauros first, but Tauros then I have to, um, I, if I go Tauros, I basically accept that I'm just, I'm still dead to crit on Milo Dick. So I think that the, the call was correct to go Milo Dick first. Quick attack and Ice Beam should have killed it, and then it was East Speed, and I could have gone for the same situation and made it through with five to six months, depending. It was, it was still a good run. I learned a lot. I, I met, you know, I made some new friends. Um, thank you to everyone who helped me. Thanks to Yon for introducing me, uh, me to the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, you can't always win, you know? You can't win them all, and you can't win any of them. I'm not, like, someone for, like, super sentimental, you know, cheesy quotes or anything, but, like, well, this one, I really did feel like it was about the journey. I feel like I gained, even though I lost the run, I feel like I, I gained a much deeper appreciation for Nuzlocke than I had before, personally. Um, and I had a lot of fun. I, I've, I've been really into this. I've been spending time outside stream, like working on my game plans, working on my on my like ideas and, and coming up with some really, some strategies that I'm really proud of. Um, and so, <sighs> yeah, I mean, the, the MV4 is just brutal and you can't win them all. And, and something with Pokemon in general that I apply to life is that like, you can play well and you can lose and you can play well or you can play poorly and still win and so like when you're looking at how you did it, you can't just look at the result right because there's other factors at play um so i don't know so that's that's how i feel about it i'm, I'm proud of this and, and even though i didn't win i, I think that with a, i think that with, with a couple different roles i, I could have won here pretty even even with only three pokemon i think i could have beaten steven um so I, I, I'm proud of how I played. I think I made the right calls, um, which isn't always how I feel after a loss, but sometimes sometimes you just don't, you, don't, you can't win them all, you know? I really enjoyed it. I think I made that clear. Uh, I'm not salty over losing. I mean, it, it stings a little bit, but like, I hope that I put in a good show and, and I think I played well. And that's kind of all I can ask for, you know? Um, and we got lucky to make it past Glacia with the, with the mods that we did. So got good luck on Glacia, very bad luck on, uh, on, on um, what's it called? Um, Drake, but yeah, that's okay. Um, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for me. I hope you all enjoyed. This took a lot out of me, so I'm gonna go rest up, play some TFT. Um, and I, I think I think that's all I have to say. So um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I'll, if you want to let me know, I, I would love to do some more Nuzlocke. I definitely have been, I enjoyed this a lot. So I'll probably do another Nuzlocke next. I'm obviously not feeling VGC a lot. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And um, yes, yeah, see you Wednesday or Thursday probably. Um, and thanks again for all the support.